I'm Liz here at Dolphin Island Sea Lab with Discovery Hall Programs and today I'm here to talk about watersheds and show you how to build your very own watershed. Now before we get started we should probably address what is a watershed? The first image that might come to mind is well shed full of water but the watershed we're going to be talking about today is actually referring to how water sheds off the land. And that's because a watershed is actually the area of land where all water drains to one place, like a lake or an ocean. So that means wherever it rains within that area, that water will eventually run into a stream, down to a, a river, and eventually out into the ocean. So as you can see in this photo, here at Dauphin Island, we're located in the Mobile Bay watershed. So what that means is anywhere it rains here in the green, that water's gonna run into another river, which is gonna make its way down to Mobile Bay and eventually out into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, to see how a watershed works, we're gonna make our own using a couple items you can find around the house. Today I'll be working with a large cookie sheet, but you can use any type of container that has edges to catch the water, some aluminum foil in various different sizes, some tape, some permanent markers, and a spray bottle. Now, to make our model, you're gonna first begin by making our landscape. And we're gonna make our model to look like the Mobile Bay watershed, which takes up most of the state of Alabama. So we'll have some mountains in the back, some hills in the middle, and eventually we'll end down in Mobile Bay. And to do that, you're gonna start with your aluminum foil and tape, and you're gonna crumble up those pieces of aluminum foil and pile them up until you start to get some mountains. And to secure our mountains, Go ahead and take them down to your pan. And when you're done, you should get something that looks like this. As you can see, the tallest mountains are in the back, smaller hills in the middle, and flat part down to represent Mobile Bay, just like here in Alabama. And when you're finished, you're gonna take one large sheet of aluminum foil, and you're just gonna cover your landscape so that we have a nice smooth surface. tuck in all the nooks and crannies because that's going to help our water drain or shed off of our water. All right, now there's one thing that's missing before we test our watershed and that's us because we live in Mobile Bay. Now one of the easiest ways to add humans or features to our watershed is to go ahead and draw them using a permanent marker or maybe you have some items you can use around the house you can add on like maybe I want to add a car down in this development a tractor for where my farm is going to be and I'm going to go ahead and use these oysters to represent the Gulf of Mexico okay. so I'm going to add a house for where I live maybe a school a grocery store just some features that you're going to find in your town near you As you can see in my watershed, I've got a home to represent where people live, cars to show how we drive around, as well as some roadways. I've got a library or a school, which I represented with a little book next to it because I recognize I'm not the best artist. And then I have a farm where my food is grown. Now, we're ready to test our watershed. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that spray bottle and you're gonna go ahead and make it rain on your watershed. What did you notice? Did all the water run downhill right away? Did it start to collect in certain areas? Did it take a path of least resistance? On my watershed, it seemed to, there's some that stopped up here. We can call that like an uphill lake or mountain lake. But a lot of my water ran right down this creek into probably a bigger river and made its way all the way down to Mobile Bay in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the one thing that's missing from our watershed is some human impacts because unfortunately us as humans we're not always the best at making sure pollution stays where it's supposed to be and doesn't make its way into the waterway so today to model our pollution i've gone ahead 
ahead and collected a couple more items from my pantry and I've got some cocoa powder, some cinnamon, some soy sauce, and some sesame seeds. And let's take a look at our watershed. What are some sources of pollution that you might see? On my watershed, I'm thinking here at this house or even at school, maybe some trash blew out of the trash can and it didn't go where it was supposed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle some of these sesame seeds to represent that trash. I take a look at my farm and I know that my farm has some pesticides on it. So I'm gonna add some cinnamon to represent those pesticides and I'm just gonna sprinkle it all over my field right here. Also at my house, I don't know about you, but it's springtime, which means I just started my garden. And I've gone ahead and I've put, in, or put some fertilizers and some manure spread all over my home garden. So I'm gonna spread some of that cocoa powder to represent manure and put some on the farm too, because we know that they're fertilizing their crops. And last but not least, you'll notice the cars and all the roadways. And one of the most common pollutants on the road is oil that leaks from people's cars. And so we'll add some oil to our roads. And once you have all your pollution set, let's model our watershed again. Let's make it rain. And if you're really excited, it can be a big thunderstorm. Now, let's take a look at our watershed. You can see some of the pollution around its original sources and that water is a little darker brown, but it's not too bad. And that's because a lot of times right at the source, the pollution isn't that bad. But you'll notice as I'm getting closer to the Gulf of Mexico, all the pollution from those different waterways is combining and it's really making that water dark and dirty. And when that pollution load gets too high, it can be really unsafe and unhealthy for both animals and us as humans. And so I challenge you to go ahead and take, find some items in your house that you can represent pollution and make your own watershed. And go ahead and share your watershed models once you're finished with us here on our Facebook page right below in the comments section because we want to see what you're able to create at home.